um, Tiffany Smiley, who is um, going to share all of her resilience tips. And boy, does she have a story to share. So we are super excited. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Brilliantly Resilient Live show. How about that? That is now also a podcast. Can you imagine all this stuff on our world tour that we have taken virtually as the <laughs> world is uh, hashtag staying home, flattening the curve and doing our part in all of this. We are Kristen Smedley and Mary Fran Bontempo and we are here to guide you through life sucker punches and help you reset rise and reveal your brilliance. And today we are so excited to have a resilience champion champion tiffany smiley tiffany we are so excited that you're here with us oh thank you and i love what you say is reveal your brilliance because we all have something um that this world needs and it's often untapped and and so i, I just love your title getting more people to live in their brilliance is is amazing yeah, cool. Well, we're so glad that you're here with us. Give us a, give our listeners, our viewers, um, a little bit of background on how you came to to where you are now. Yes. So I, um, ever since I was in kindergarten, I wanted to be a nurse. So there was no doubt about it that when I graduated, I was going to get my bachelor's in science and become a nurse. I just loved helping people. It was in my bones. It was everything um, that I loved. Science and helping people. It just, it was everything to me. And, you know, marrying my husband, he went to the United States Military Academy. So for, I, I was marrying into a military life, essentially, um, had no background in the military, came from a um, group of far, on a farm in a very small town. And so this was a whole new world to me. And I married Scotty, he was right at the height of um, the Iraq-Afghanistan wars. And very quickly, he was deployed to Mosul, Iraq. And during that time, um, I just worked as much as I could because it was a great distraction to be helping people um, and serving others as a nurse during that time. Um, but nothing prepared me for the day that I was awoken out of bed at 3 a.m. Um, with a phone call. And I was excited because normally Scotty would call at different times. And mm -hmm. so I sort of, you know, got out of bed with excitement and thinking it would be Scotty. Um, but this time it was someone else's voice. And you know, I say at the beginning of our life, it was like the picture of the American dream. I was a nurse, this military officer. Um, our future was so bright. And then with this phone call, this American dream blew up into a million pieces. And on the other end of the line, it wasn't Scotty's voice. It was someone else. And they said, Tiffany, I'm so sorry. They just kept repeating that. I'm so sorry. And when he could say it, he said, Scotty's come face to face with a suicide car bomb and there is shrapnel in both of his eyes. And he said, he flatlined. I, I don't, because of the blood loss, I don't even know if he's going to survive. Mm. And my world blew up into a million pieces. I, I remember feeling like it's not real. This can't be. And I couldn't do anything. <laughs> he was on mm. the other side of the world. I couldn't yeah. go see him. Um, I, and so it's interesting, it's like some of the things we're experiencing today, it, it, um, where we are right now in the world has brought back some of these feelings for me too. Um, of sure. feeling utterly hopeless or, or what do I do? Or, um, you know, I just felt stuck. And um, one thing I knew I could do and that was pray. And that was pray for him. Hmm. And um, I resigned from my nursing job and I met him five days later. I showed up at Walter Reed and um, it was my first trip to D Washington, D.C., my first one-way ticket to Washington, D.C. Oh, gosh. And went up to Walter Reed and met Scotty there. And it, it was a very hopeless situation. Um, he was paralyzed on the right side of his body. He was having reactions to medication and he had lost both of his eyes. Um, so it was very clear that he would now all of a sudden be blind the rest of his life. And, and this was a man who was in the best shape of his life, was a platoon leader. He, he had everything ahead of him. And, and now it just seemed to be this hopeless situation. But I made a choice. <clears throat> and I chose to not listen 
to um, the words that were being spoken over the situation. Um, I chose a different path and I think it was really the beginning of my resilience journey. I just didn't always know it. <laughs> and uh, I, I was dedicated to being more than what this situation was presenting. And I remember walking outside of the hospital one day, it was a particularly hard day. And um, I was frustrated and I was mad. And I, I looked up at the moon and it was shining bright. And see, in this moment in my life, it, everything felt chaotic. The, the noise, the sounds, the smells, the things people were telling me, my whole life was chaotic. But in this moment, it was silent. And I was walking behind the hospital by myself and the moon was shining bright. I just remember looking up at the moon and, and telling myself, this will not define your future. This will not define Scotty and this mm -hmm. will not define you. And so every day I walked into his room and I spoke truth and hope and life. And I would tell him all the things he could be. So everyone was telling him everything he couldn't be. He could not be. Mm -hmm. And I said, I will not go in and tell him he can't do something or he can't be something. So I chose the opposite. I said, I'm going to go in and tell him what he can do. <laughs> so I told him he, you know, he could be a speaker. I'm like, you're going to be a speaker someday. You'd be an excellent teacher and you're going to write a book. And he would say, you're crazy. I can't even get out of bed. I can't even get out of bed to go to the bathroom. And you think I'm going to be able to be a speaker? Um, and then I would come back the next day and say it again. And a pivotal moment came when I was brought into a room to sign his medical retirement paperwork. It was a, a doctor, social worker, VA administrator. And they said, Mrs. Smiley, you have power of attorney. Here's the paperwork to begin to retire your husband out of the military. Sign right here. And I looked at them and I said, I'm not signing that. And sh they were all shocked. <laughs> they never had someone tell them, no, I'm not signing that. <laughs> so the doctor said, you know, felt like, okay, maybe she's, you know, not really thinking clearly. And he said, let me just remind you, your husband has no eyes. And there has never been someone to continue service blind, sign the paperwork. And again, I said, no. Um, because I was, I believed in my vision and, and my hope that I had for our future more than I believed in anyone else's doubt. And it was radical of me to say no and radical of me to think that Scotty could continue service to our country. That had never been done before. So I was, I was being bold. I was standing my ground, but I had a bigger picture in mind. I didn't know how I would get there, but I knew it, it began with my choice that I was making. And so that allowed Scotty, long story short, but that allowed Scotty to uh, become the first blind active duty officer to continue service to our country. He wrote a book, he became a teacher, he's a speaker, he speaks all over the country. And um, so I went from a nurse to now a uh, running a business and launching a speaking business from the ground up. So I always tell people, if I can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> I'm My a goodness. science nerd. <laughs> um, and it's, you know, I did it alone for so long. I, I and, and that's part of the reason why I launched More Than Me, and we can get into that here in a little bit. Um, but I, I did it alone. I, I was so isolated. I didn't have um, women to help me. I just gritted it out, right, until I hit a wall. And when I hit the wall, I looked back and evalu evaluated my life. And did, I started to realize, oh, you're resilient. I never acknowledged that before. I had yeah. never honored that in my life before of, of what I had been through and, and what I was able to figure out and, and the problems I was able to solve while managing you know, kids and life and business, all these things that amazing women do, amazing people do all over the world. But I truly believe it was a pivotal moment in my life um, when I raised my hand and said that I needed help. Um, so I'm going I'm to pause right there because you have given us so much incredible information. And Mary Fran always says all, in all of our presentations with Brilliantly Resilient, in all of our conversations with people, she always says, you have this. It's, it's already there. Like people think that they have to go out and have an experience to be resilient. And, and we've talked about this before. There's, it's all the little things or sometimes a big thing, but 
everybody, we always say we, we help people uncover their brilliance. Like you uncovered your resilience and brilliance. It was already there. You had been practicing all along and, and people think it's maybe a personality type or certain skills. And it's, it's just what's unique to you that you're, you're a testimony to that's exactly how it all unfolds. And I have to also say, hearing the story of, of you getting the phone call and envisioning how you, you give such good detail to set us in that, in your frame of mind, walking into Walter Reed and all of that. When I had met you guys, um, for all of the, the listeners and the viewers, I, my family was fortunate to, to meet um, uh, Scotty and Tiffany way back when he received the Man of the Year Award here in, in Philly at Associated Services of the Blind, which is where I took my sons every year to have blind role models so that they would never see limits on their life. And you guys walked in like this incredibly gorgeous, put together, shiny, and, and like this light just comes from the two of you. And I thought, what an amazing couple. And, and people just wanted to come up and talk to you guys because you're just, you were so warm and inviting. And it just looked like, you know, and I was three little kids and this, this crazy mess of a life. And I'm like, look at this. I think I probably had like stuff all over my jacket with all these kids <laughs> touching me, you know? And I'm like, man, these guys are so put together. Like you forget that there's those moments where you started in, you know, with your life in a million pieces and pick yourselves up. And then, and then I also have to ask you this, when you said to Scotty, when you were walking and everybody was telling him nothing was going to be the same and you were like, Nope, you're going to do it. Did you firmly believe it? Or were you doing a fake it till you make it? You did. It wasn't a fake it till you make it. I, I believed it with everything I had. Um, you know, I was 23 years old during that time. Wow. So I, I didn't realize I, that either. Yeah. I had my whole life ahead of me. Wow. So I was very much so driven to make that happen. Um, I believed it with all of my heart. So you know, that's, a, that's 23. That's amazing. One of the things that you said, well, a lot of things that you said struck me. I'm sitting here scribbling like notes, you know, wildly <laughs> as you're talking. But, you know, one of the other things that you the first thing that you said that really rang true with me was that you said you made a choice. And that's another thing that Kristen and I always talk about. Um, one of the things that I came up with, I mean, my story is, is that my son um, is in recovery from like a decade long heroin addiction. He's doing marvelously well, but I made that choice also. This is not going to define us. This is not going to be the end of our story. And the way I, I put it in, in the book that I, the 15 minute master is you have a decision to make because sometimes life sucks. Are you just visiting or are you going to live there? So you made the decision that, okay, we're here, but we're not going to live here. We are getting out of this and we are moving forward. Yes, absolutely. And I think it is, it, it, it kind of, it's hard to say it's a choice. You know, when someone's going through something hard, it's, it's hard to break that down for them to understand, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but it truly is. I think we have that choice every day. It, yeah. it wasn't just like a one and done choice that I made. Right. I woke up every day and said, this is my choice. I'm going to go believe in this. Um, and you look at the statistics and you, you know, even from, you know, people recovering from cancer or, or various things or hardships and the positive mindset and the people who believed in something bigger and better and made that choice every day, the outcomes are drastically different. Yeah. And that yeah. doesn't, doesn't mean that the experience is not going to be terribly challenging and hard. Exactly. Exactly. And yes, you make that choice, but you're still, I always say you're, you know, some days you're going to take two steps backwards Yeah, and you're going to feel like you're failing and you're, you're, you know, not doing something right or, but then the next day you're going to take a little step forward. And then maybe a week from then you take a leap, you know, forward and maybe a step back. It just, it really is. It doesn't mean that it's not hard or you're not going to face the challenges, but when you believe in that vision and that choice you made more than anyone else's doubt, you can walk that path. Um, all the ups and downs of it. 
Um, and I always say like, it's, it's a beautiful thing and you all have probably experienced this, but to be able to look back on that journey and smile Mm-hmm. Yeah. Versus feel the pain because there was many times I looked back and I still felt that pain, you know, but I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. But to look back and see it is just like, I always see this like beautiful artwork um, that all of us have the ability to create with our lives. Um, and I it love gives- that. I think you see one of the things that's funny that you said that, that you use that term because I've often said to people that we're in this like tapestry and yeah. we're threads but it's only when we can pull back that we see the whole thing. You yeah. see these threads of, of challenge and pain and difficulty that you go through. But when you take the experience as you and Scotty have, and as Kristen has, and, and hopefully as I have, and you make it mean more than yourself, yes. then it becomes part of this, this tapestry. And, you know, one of the other things that you said that really struck me was that you said you didn't know how you were going to get there. You just knew that somehow you weren't going to stay where you were. And we talk about not being married to outcomes all of the time, like Mm -hmm. not being married to this plan that you have and being able to let it evolve. And that's probably what you guys have to do on a daily basis. Daily basis. Absolutely. Daily basis. Um, But over the years, it it reiterated to us Um, once again, the power of choice that we all have to make, Um, and then our ability um, to rely on each other to accomplish it, that we really don't do anything alone, um, and we we truly need each other to help us through through those moments and those times, and um, it's, it it is, it's an amazing journey. It's not, you know, I look back, I'm like, I would never choose that for my life in a million years, right? <laughs> when people go, oh, it was a blessing. I'm like, no, no, no. it's not. It was not a blessing. No. It was no. awful. It was awful. I am not, it was awful. It was. Um, but it's exactly what you said when you can realize that it's more than you, right? Um, and step outside of yourself. That is I don't know. It's a new level of enrichment. I feel like that happens in your life because you've been forged through the fire Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the ability to make an impact on other people's lives. I always say, I am so humbled every time that we speak um, and to think that our story can change someone's life or give them hope or help them. Like what you were saying in the beginning, Christian, like it brought tears to my eyes. Like, that's the power. I always say we are each other's greatest assets. Yeah. You just don't tap into it enough. Um, but it, it's truly humbling and it's, it's, it's become a gift. The hardship has become a gift and um, we just hope to share it with more people and help more people along the journey. So one of the um, quotes that I have in my book, Thriving Blind, is Ralph Waldo Emerson said, it's something along the lines of our chief want in life is someone to inspire us to, to be what we know that we could be. Yes. That you just need yes. that. I think that's part of the whole human connection that you need somebody that um, can inspire you that way. And that's what I, the whole reason I did the book was because who would I be to sit on this information that I watch firsthand account my son, Michael, his trajectory of his life changed with every single role model that he met. And it had not, sure, I was the guide on the side getting him the technology and all that and, and screaming at teachers and schools, but he had to, in his own mind, decide that, that he was going to do it. I could never do all that for him. And it was, it was all of, you know, Scotty and Eric Weimer and all the other folks in, in the book and people that we've met that really, because they're walking the walk that he has to walk. You know, he went Eric Weimer, the blind mountain climber, at six yeah. years old, and Eric had just come off of Everest. How do you then go into your life thinking when someone would say he had like they would put limits on Michael? He's like he looked at him like people like are you? Do you know who I am? Like do you know <laughs> what we are capable of in the blind community, where where everyone else looks at the blind community so differently? And that's it's an adjustment for him now at twenty years old, going for internships. He's like. What, what is with this world that they look at the blind community? Don't they know who we are? Isn't that funny? Like his, his perception is totally different. Yep. I love that. But it's because of folks like Scotty that he met.
So, so tell us now about your more than me, because you really took that, that, that feeling, that idea to heart. And I mean, obviously you live it every day, but now you've created a community about that. Yeah. So, you know, like I shared, I, I hit this brick wall and had to take a step back and, and learn what it meant to raise my hand and say, I need help. Um, and I often say, you know, people think the most courageous thing I did was not signing that paperwork. And I say, that was, that was courageous, but no, that was not the hardest thing. <laughs> the hardest thing, the most courageous thing I've done is raise my hand and say, I need help. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't do this alone. I know from the outside, it looks like I've, you know, I've built this business. We have this great speaking business. Scotty's gone on and done all these incredible things but I need to know who I am. I, and up to that point, I didn't understand that I was even resilient or capable of salt. Like, you know, there, there really has to be a moment of observing um, to, mm. to bring in the wisdom um, and to understand our, our journeys. And so I needed some time to do that. And as I began to do that, I started to realize, oh my goodness, you just, you built this business, you did all these things, you hit this brick wall, well, of course you did because you were doing it alone. Um, and I wanted, I watched, you know, Scotty have all this professional and personal development and all these opportunities. And I thought, okay, I want that too. I want women to have that too. So I created a platform for, ex- for anyone from experts to beginners where we come together. And if I can make that journey easier for another woman, I want to do that. If you're looking to start a business or you have an idea or you just want to live a more positive life and you want a community of women to help you along the way, I wanted that. So I created that for women. I call it more than me because it is truly, it's more than all of us. It's what we were saying in the beginning. (laughs) It's more than all of us. And we need each other. Yeah. And especially now more than ever, we need each other. Um, and so it, it's a robust, intriguing, unique, um, community, um, women from all walks of life. We have doctors, PhD doctors, women who are just starting a business, women who are stay at home moms and just want to be able to share with their children ideas for growth and connect with new ideas and perspectives. So it is a very unique, awesome group of women. And every time I, 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 I kind of have to pinch myself because I remember the days when I was like, I want this in my life. And here I am walking in it and creating it. And um, I just, I love creating. I love making things easier for other people. Um, and, and like you said, Kristen, at the beginning, like, why would I withhold this? Why would I, you know, keep this from someone if it can help them? Um, and so it's an awesome community where women's businesses are thriving. Um, they're awesome. having shifts and, and we're just, we're just growing and supporting each other along the way. And this was a, this was an in-person and then it shifted to online. Like you had to be well, resilient all over again now. <laughs> yeah, right. It's something that happens all the time. Um, it, it was always an online community because we have members all over. And I was very adamant about that because I even like times like we're in now, I think it's so important to have different perspectives and not just get caught in your own situation, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and in your own little world, it's so important to have wide range of perspectives. And so it was always a um, virtual community, but we did in-person events as well. So now our in-person events have just flipped to virtual events. Um, like the one that you attended, Kristen. So it's, um, it's a very active community. And, and you're right. I love what you said about resilience because, you know, I wrote, I came up with a five-step program to resilience. And I always tell people, it's not just a one and done thing. It's a repeat. I am constantly going through mm-hmm. these steps. Like, like you said, I just had, was in meetings all day today, flipping everything to virtual, flipping over all my events. Um, and it is a process that is always happening in me now. It's just once you, once you know that you have what it takes, that, that's truly when you become unstoppable. Um, yeah. That you have those tools. You're like, okay, I know this is going to be hard. 
but you know what? I know how to get through it now and I know where to go and I know the steps that I have to go through. Um, it sure takes a whole lot of stress and anxiety off the table. Well, it's funny because Mary Fran and I, just before you, you got on, we were talking about, we have never, now we've been through all of our stuff, right? Constant, well, I feel like mine are constant sucker punches. It just won't stop. Then we create this program about teaching everything that we've learned to recover from all of that and rise and all. Then it goes, the whole world shuts down. But then once we got our heads around it and said, how can we, because we keep, we were joking that it was a world tour, our live events. We we're going to go around the, and we're literally going around the world virtually now. And we're together all the time on this, on the screen for the past 10 days. And, and we were like, we have never been so productive and our reach has gone so far in 10 days because we've had all this practice lining up to us that now it just feels like when you said unstoppable, that's how it yep. feels that it's channeling now. Now I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So you gave me all this practice and resilience for this moment. For this to happen. Yeah. But it is because yeah, yeah. we're able to sit there and go, oh, okay, well, we can just make that a podcast and we don't overthink it. Now it's just flipping all of and it. that's yes. the, and that's the key and and I think you know you lived that every day I'm sure when you were going through everything with Scotty where you don't overthink it you just go okay let's go into this and see what happens you know and yeah. and recognize that you can adjust as you go on like you said Tiffany yeah. this is a work in progress this is something we are always um, you know you have to keep reverberating it through your head and you and you have built a community that helps you to do that so Tell us where you can, we can all find you and your community and, and get out there and, and just join forces with your energy and your spirit. Yes, yes. Thank you. So morethanme.com is um, our website. You can connect with us on social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, more than me. Um, I also, you know, I'm, I speak as well, keynote speaks. So that's all under Tiffany Smiley. You can find Tiffany Smiley. Um, and then we have a podcast. We're going to be relaunching it because we've been working so hard behind the scenes on a lot of other projects, but we're relaunching our podcast and our podcast is the more than me podcast. Oh, cool. So well, that's great. After, yes. Tune into that. We have several episodes up on there as well. Um, but it's yes. Connect, connect with us, reach out to us. Um, our, the emails come directly to me. And um, I, I love connecting with women from all over doing incredible work. So come hang out with us. Well, and you are certainly the, the kind of person that you can just hang out with. Like, that's why I said to Mary Fran in the beginning, you're going to have to reel me in because we could sit here and talk for three hours. Because very easily. We, we clearly, it, it almost made me feel like when you were talking, I was like, okay, well, check, check, check. Because I was like, all right, well, that's something that we talk about that we can share, you know, and because it's, the message is just universal. And I just want to thank you for being so gracious in the way that you've shared it with uh, our viewers, listeners, and I don't I don't know whatever other platform we're going to be on. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank you so much for taking the time out of your out of your day and sharing this message with us, Tiffany. I'm so happy to. And and you know, isolation does social isolation does not mean that we have to be isolated. And um, you know, maybe more so now than ever, we're realizing what really what truly does matter. And um, it is, it is each other. It's more than me. It's more than you. It's more than us. It's, it's all of us. And so I'm so thrilled to be on here with you guys. Oh, thanks so much. That is a perfect wrap up to the whole conversation. So everybody go check out more than me and Tiffany smiley.com go search the podcast on Apple podcasts and you'll find that podcast relaunching and Tiffany, thanks so much for joining us and everybody tune in again. We are a daily show on YouTube and Facebook while we get everybody through this uh, big worldwide shutdown and crisis, learn the tools of resilience, share with us your tools of resilience, and we'll keep the conversation going. Thanks for tuning in. Bye everybody. Okay. The live stream is off.